This presentation continues our discussion of Chapter 13, Fundamental Equilibrium Concepts. In this last video, we're discussing Section 13.4 and going over a summary of our problem-solving strategies. So let's summarize the strategies that we've learned so far. First of all, you want to set up an ice table and an equilibrium expression using the given information and x's to represent stoichiometry changes as the reaction approaches equilibrium. You'll then need to solve your expression for any unknown quantities. Usually this means solving for x. If there are no powers of x, we can do this with simple algebra. If there are x squared terms, you can use the quadratic formula, or sometimes you can use simplifying assumptions. If you have higher powers of x, you're forced to use simplifying assumptions. Let's go over some of the strategies for using these simplifying uh, assumptions. Your strategy depends on whether or not you have a small or large k and what you're starting with. So let's look first at when the value of k is small. And what do we mean by small? Typically we're saying much less than one. If your k is small and you start with mostly reactants, then your starting position is close to your ending position or your equilibrium position. So the changes that you're gonna be making should be small. So we can usually assume that x is going to be small. However, if the k value is small and your initial position is mostly products, then you're very far from the equilibrium position and assuming x to be small is not a good assumption. But what we can do here is use stoichiometry to push the reaction back to reactants and then let it adjust forward with some changes called y. In this case, we expect that y should probably be small. If on the other hand, you have a large k value, and again, what do we mean here? k much greater than one, and typically we're probably talking about k's in the order of uh, greater than 100. And to be really safe, k greater than 1,000. So what can we do here? If you have a large K and you're starting with mostly reactants, then again, your starting position is very far from the equilibrium position. So it's not going to be a good idea to assume that your X's are small. But like in the previous case, we can fix this by using stoichiometry to push the reaction all the way to products. Any adjustments back, our Y values, then should be small. If you have a large K and you start with mostly products, then you, your starting position is close to the ending position and you're probably safe in assuming that your X values are small. Remember also that at the end, you need to check any assumptions that you've made using the 5% rule. Even if the 5% rule is not completely met, you can still use this method by iterating. Finally, it's always a good idea to go ahead and plug your final answers back into your equilibrium expression, just to make sure you haven't made any algebra mistakes. So we've now finished all of the topics for chapter 13. You should now be ready to work on the group problems from section 13.4, numbers 11 through 16.